What's up, YouTube? It's been a while. Sorry. The uh, plastic habit had to take a backseat to things. But, I'm back. And what's more important is Bayformers are back! Yay! Now, what's a Bayformer, you may ask? Oh, you noob. Oh, oh, you are so glad you are you right now. But, let me tell you anyway. A Bayformer in quotes, Bay Former, is a Transformer designed for Michael Bay's series of live-action Transformers movies. Waving my hands under the camera. They are highly stylized, ultra-detailed, ultra-realistic, I almost screwed up that word, t takes on Transformers. For an example of a previous one, Here's Dark of the Moon, Shockwave. You can see all the detail. And if I turn them into robot mode, I didn't think this through really well. And he's being a pain. Come on, Shockwave. There we go. Love this toy. As I sit here and do nothing, not do nothing, but nothing you can't, you can see on camera. Uh, mm, takes longer than he should. I haven't played with him in a bit. But here is a good idea of the overly stylized bay former. All the details. This there's a good example. Now, bringing me to my current subject, they're back! Yes, it's Movie 4, Age of Extinction. And this is Dinobot Slug. Check out this beautiful piece of work if you weren't already. He's like completely made out of spikes and solid gorgeous. I think I'm getting to understand why Theo likes purple so much. It's beautiful on Transformers like this. But first, the packaging. Because I still have that. Here is the Age of Extinction's packaging. You can see. Movie 4 logo. Yes, this is from a movie. Transformers. Transformers. You can see a uh, more movie accurate picture of Slug. Uh, supposedly in the movie they're all going to be gray. And I guess they didn't. Hasbro didn't want to sell monotone toys, so they gave them random paint jobs. But right here you can see Dinobot Slug, who is. An homage to G1 Slag. Why they couldn't just use Slag? Because apparently it's turned into a bad word. I don't get it. There's a picture of his robot mode. Age 8 plus, you don't care. Another nice picture. On the back, you get a bio. And it reads, he hates taking orders unless he gets to destroy something. And others in the line, Crosshairs, who is ugly as fuck, and Bumblebee, who is just your standard deluxe movie Bumblebee. Again, nice picture of the robot, picture of the Triceratops mode. Nothing on the bottom. 
And that's your packaging. And you get a set of instructions. Oddly enough, I keep all of these. I have them in a drawer over there. But we'll get down to this piece of plastic. And it is a very nice piece of plastic. And yes, it is a triceratops of sorts. First off, triceratops have three horns. This guy has five. So he's more like a cousin to G1 Slag, I guess. Some nice silver paint going on in the shoulders. Nice flame red, I guess, for the mane. Crystal blue eyes. Tampographed Autobot symbol on that side. And overall, he's a very nice, overly stylized Triceratops. With like tons of spikes and a really cool paint job. Now, get out your alcohol, because we're about to play a game the Nostalgia Critic likes to play a lot. It's going to be the take a shot for every time I say something game. And this time it's going to be soft plastic. So, first off, the tail, soft plastic. All three of these horns, soft plastic. His, the bottom jaw, soft plastic. His weapons, soft plastic. Yeah, if you actually did what I said, you'd probably be getting hammered right about now from all the soft plastic. Now, articulation-wise, his head can go up and down. He can, like, nod pretty well. His mouth can open. Is actually, and is actually two separate pieces. I should have noticed that. Well, it's obvious that it is, but I didn't realize you could separate in dino mode. And, um, you have outward shoulder movement. For robot mode, you have... Actually, not robot mode. These arms don't affect robot mode at all. They're just kind of kibble. So that's nice. You have a dino joint specifically for a dino. Uh, hinge here. Nothing at the toes. Your tail's on a double hinge so you can go whoa, whoa, whoa. No, nothing at the leg because uh, there are two pegs there. One on each Robot mode leg, that peg into holes here, so it locks. You can still get leg articulation, but I don't think you want to, and toes can do this. So, no, oh, yep. Visible head, uh, weapon storage, or accessory wise, he comes with. These two soft plastic swords. They were, for some reason, designed with gaping holes in the tops to slide through for storage. You'd be for ridiculous store, ridiculous storage mode in three, two, one. There are holes right there, in there, and you have your flying Triceratops mode. And, yeah, you can't really call that weapon storage. It's more like he didn't have enough spikes, so he just grabbed two more spikes and shoved them on the sides of him. It was like, good, flying dino mode. Next mode. Uh, start. Take the tail. Flip it up. Flip, actually, uh, flip this piece around. Flip the leg out, out, uh, flip the toe out, so he has iron chic boots, 
And this is where I stumble. I've only had this guy for a few hours today to play with him. Take this. You're going to... It's pegged in up there. So you're going to remove it from its pegs. Bring it down. And now you can flip out the hands. As you can see, the hands were just in there. And close up his forearms. You better do it now. Now you're going to take the dino mode arms, fold them down. They're on, uh, I think they're on ball joints, maybe. And then, this is my favorite part, you're going to take the dino head and rip it in half. And that exposes the robot head and, every, and chest. And let me say this. If you have a tra I'm screwing up my words. I'm always sold on a transformation that involves ripping a dinosaur head in half. That's just awesome! And then you're going to peg the dynamode hands or elbows into holes where these were. And uh, now you're just tidying up, extending the shoulders out a bit. And then take these flaps, fold them down. And there's your robot mode. And you can really see where the movie aesthetic is going with. They're going with uh, Medieval Knights, which admittedly is pretty badass for dinosaurs. Detail-wise, all the purple is still here. The red's only slightly here. There's a little bit more red poking through on his belly. It's very cool. That face sculpt is rocking. This is something I thought the movie verse would never do is a unstylized helmet or head. You got a nice blue strip for the eyes. No light piping, but yeah. You've got the whole dino head becomes the shoulders, which is awesome. And they still articulate, so you can have one, like, this guy can be the good one that says, don't do it. And this one could be the asshole saying, yeah, do it. You know, for that old uh, pun of angel and devil. I've seen it done on Family Guy. It's pretty, it's all right. A lot of, he still has a lot of spike details, even on his robot mode bits. Like this torso. It's a pretty tidy torso, if you don't look at the fact he's got giant purple triceratops feet coming out of his thigh, thighs and waist. You can just imagine it's uh, armor. That's good. Armor. That's what it is. And his uh, legs have folded down into nice iron chic boots. Articulation-wise, his head is on a ball joint. So you can get a nice range of motion. You can go. You can look around slightly. You can look up and down. And whoa! I just killed him. One second. <laughs> yeah, that's an unfortunate side effect of the how his head is designed. It's a very small ball joint, and he's got a spike on the back of his head, so he bends up, he's gonna take his head off. Shoulders, you got this joint, the transformation joint, still works. You got your shoulder on a ball joint, go in and out, up and down. You've got a bicep swivel really tight bicep swivel. you got a uh, elbow and you've got a wrist hinge. He has a torso joint and 
I mentioned something I forgot to mention. I do have the other Dinobot in the Wave 1, Scorn. And this guy, unlike Scorn, has a waist joint designed for robot mode. Well, this guy, if I ever get to around to reviewing him, the transformation is designed to prevent the waist joint from working. So, you got a nice waist joint, hips, ball jointed, thigh swivel, and a uh, pretty good knee. Actually, a double knee. Really nice knee joint. You have a bit of forward motion on the knee joint. And due to transformation, your foot can do that. It's a very tidy package, I find. This guy really pleases the uh, dark, the Beast Wars lover in me. Somehow. And a just the fact that Dinobots are awesome makes this guy even more worthwhile. So, yes, he is very worthwhile. Swords, of course, can peg into the or just go into the hole in his hand, which I kind of wish they'd stop using. Like, like actually articulate fingers for deluxes. That'd be awesome. Put him off to the side and wrapping up, I guess. Dinobot Slug is very worth your time. Yes, he's a bit small. And yes, I give Bolt Matrix credit. Like, he knows what he's talking about. He is a bit small, but that's Bolt Matrix's opinion. And that should not take away from your satisfaction of playing with this toy. And I'm, fi I'm glad I finally have him to go with his buddy, Scorn. I was going to do Scorn, but there are way too many ass hand jokes that I could have made that probably TJ Omega would have already made. In fact, he did make at least one in his review, so. And I picked Slug. Now, if anybody out there is asking where to get a G1 repaint of technically Slag, uh, I recommend, and I'll put a link to the description, of Cheatimus.com. Link in the description. Uh, he, he's a friend of a uh, other toy reviewer, Bolt Matrix. If you know Bolt Matrix, you've probably seen his stuff. He's pretty good. But check out Cheatimus.com. He's taken all the Dinobots currently available. So, Grimlock, Scorn, Slag, slug, and did them all up in really amazing G1 paint schemes, which, from what I've seen just looking at his stuff, look amazing. So, again, if you want to pay overpriced G1 repaints of currently available movie toys, check check out Cheatimus.com. And, oh yeah, I've seen this guy repainted his Beast Wars Megatron, which looks awesome. But, I, I'll get to this guy one day, maybe. But, uh, that about wraps up, so, thank you for watching. I have been That Weird Collector, and see you next time.